I'm blessed and free. Welcome back to another episode of DOC TV, where we talk about crime, we talk about prison, we talk about jail, and I bring people on who have been down that road in life and have turned their life around. And today's guest is a perfect example of that. Man, why don't you go ahead? Um, I know you reached out to me. You wanted to share your story. So why don't you tell the people what your name is and where you're from? My name's Conrad Kraus, and I'm from Pinellas Park, Florida. So you're right over the bridge then. Yes, sir. All right. So, so how'd you, uh, how'd you hear about DOC TV? So I had a few people on my list that was mutual friends on there. And then I added you on and been following you ever since. Okay. That's what's up, bro. I appreciate it. You're from uh, like my area. So I already, I already know this is going to be good. So what, uh, what sent you to prison, man? So, uh, 2012, I had a false imprisonment charge and, uh, got on house arrest and probation. I completed the, the house arrest portion of that. And was on uh, what they called unsupervised probation, where you don't pay and you don't have to check in. Basically, you're just stuck in the system until that's over. So I get down to four months and then I catch a trafficking and marijuana charge in 2016. I had four months of probation left. I think I served 70 days of the four months before I actually went before the judge and got sentenced. Five years just for a trafficking and marijuana charge. How much did you get knocked off with? Uh... <laughs> I had enough to go. It wasn't a federal charge, I'll just say, but it was a traffic charge. All right, all right. I, so, I, and it was, it, it was just marijuana. Yeah. So, so, all right, so you went to 49th Street Jail, I take it? Yep. I did 70 right. days, and then I signed for five. Were you in Max or Central? I was in Max because I had a violent charge prior. All right, so I know, but uh, for the people that don't, 49 streets of jail in Pinellas County and Max is where all the gangsters go. So why don't you tell the people what it's like in Max and uh, 49th street jail? Oh, I was in two at four. And I mean, it's pretty much just a jungle. I mean, I'm, I'm sure that Max and all these County jails, specifically Pinellas, that it's, it's a jungle, man. Cause you don't know where you're at, who you're with around who, what's going on. You don't know what kind of time you're looking at. You don't know anything. So it's pretty much eat or get eaten. Yeah, Real and quick. if you can't fight and you got some nice shoes, you, them shits oh, are you don't have, gone. <laughs> yeah, if you, if you can't fight, you don't have nice shoes. Yeah, You're on this trafficking charge. Um, so what did, what did you end up getting for that when that was all said and done? I ended up doing 4.3 years, which right. out of five. So I did, I did almost to the door. All right, so what, uh, what prison did you go to first, man? Oh, my first camp was Golf CI which is in hey, Weewa, Hitchka. That's where I just EOS from. That's the last, that's my last big golf. Yeah. I, I went there in 16. I got there in November and uh, I, I worked, uh, it's funny. I actually worked as a GED teacher there. I got a state certification to help uh, people get their GEDs. So that was something good. And then I worked staff canteen over there at golf. Were you at the main or the annex? I was at the main. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was at the annex. I, I mean, they're pretty much the same from what I've heard though. Yeah. yeah they're just, uh, and then when I was there, it was, uh, I, talking to the, obviously with the canteen job, you get a little bit more access to these people. And it was like 60% of gangs population there. And they're operating on literally 18% of, uh, workers capacity. So, but not only was I in, an, in, a, in a place, I'm not, I'm not a violent person, man. I got a marijuana charge. So I'm in a place yeah. where, you know, you pretty much are getting knives and sleeping with them on your shirt, you know, with the books and the shoes on all the time. And just definitely not a world for, for the week. I'll tell you that. So how long were you at the main unit at Gulf CI before? Like, did you run into any problems? Did anybody try you? I mean, I know you're a white boy and, and golf, you know, they're going to TOH you eventually. Oh, I was going to say, you already know, a TOH for about the first week, but really what it comes down to is just standing up. I didn't see people that were that, that were weak as fuck, but they stood up and then people really started to watch out for them. So did you, just, uh, definitely did you, a culture, man. Yeah, it's a culture shock, bro. Did you uh, join up with any gangs when you were in there? No, no. no. The white no, boys didn't the try you, bro? <laughs> oh, of course, of course. Yeah, yeah. But it's like, man, you guys are a joke, dude. I don't, I don't get high. I don't do any of that shit y'all are on, and I'm definitely not on any of that shit y'all are on because you're not living the principles you're preaching. So, so when you were at the main unit, man, I know from being at the annex, and I know how that how they run that camp up there. 
So what, what did you see as far as like the corruption goes uh, with the guards? Like whether that oh, could be gone uh, with inmates or whatever. My, uh, about my first or second week there, I, I, I quickly realized the child molester thing where these people get put down on and pay and all that. There's some Chinese kid in there who's trying to check in and I'm in the shower. I don't even realize what's going on because I'm still green. So I get, I'm in the shower and then I see the police rushing out in the, like from the laundry room into the, into the dorm. I'm like, what the fuck's going on? I've never seen this shit. But they end up, I see them bring this Chinese kid trying to check in uh, to, to the bathroom. Obviously there's no cameras and he fucking puts a knife in the dude on in the dude's jacket. It was a winter time when I went away and then they slammed the kid on the, on his head. And I'm just like, man, all right, well, if I'm in the jungle like that, then you ain't safe about nothing. Yeah, and you it's know, like the, that there, bro. Like, when I pulled yeah. up there, I don't know how it was for you, man, but when I pulled up to golf and I got out and I'd spent, like, my first week, bro, like, man, I thought I was, like, back in the 70s, like, at a refugee <laughs> camp, bro. That shit was, like, lying. that shit's like lying. the we Flintstones will, built we will hit that you. shit. <laughs> Yeah, chapter 33 don't apply. Yeah, facts, bro. That's what they so, tell you when they get off the bus. So when you were at golf, man, like, I know you said you were the canteen guy. So did you, like, did the guards treat you a little different than they treated everybody else? Um, I mean, of course, I, I feel like I got favor out of, yeah. out of respect because I got, to, I got to actually get to know who they were on a different level. So – you know, I wasn't asking about their parents or their kids or anything personal like that. But as far as, you know, they could come to the window and just be like, oh, I just found, found 16 shanks, you know. And it's like, damn, like, uh, yeah, I don't want to be in those dorms there, you know. So as far as pointers, don't go there. Don't go there. I'm just telling you. And then someone's getting stabbed to death the next day. And I'm like, geez. Did you crazy. have uh, people on the street that were riding with you through your bed, like family and shit? Oh, I had family. Um, I'll tell you what, man, I, when it comes to that, I've, I, I don't think that there's anybody who's had a better support system than me. And it's not financially, man. It's just I had a child. I had full custody. Pretty much I chose selfish actions that put me in prison and I had to abandon those responsibilities. So they stepped up and um, really helped out, brought her to see me. It was a thousand dollars a month for them to come visit me at, the, at golf from where I live. And they're yeah. doing this for two years before I get transferred to Avon Park. So they took care of my kid. You know, they made sure everything was straight. So it's like a lot of people don't have that. And and so that's that's why I'm on this quest now. I'm going to Toastmasters because it's time for me to go into the prisons and start telling these dudes my story about how the first year I came out of prison, I made over $100,000 <laughs> off of nothing besides knowing that, believing that, what God tells me he's going to fulfill, whether that's Allah, whoever they believe in. And that's the truth, man, because that's how I'm where I am now. I mean, I don't know if you see how I'm living right here, and I'm not even kidding. I've been out 10 yeah. months, straight up. I've been out All 10 right, months. So, so. so tell them, man, how'd you, how'd you make 100 grand? Well, I had lawn equipment already before I, I went to prison, and stay, I just stay started. no more, man. You got it out of the mud. <laughs> that's how you got it. You know, when I came home, I had just yep. lawn equipment, so I did have that. But I, 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 you know, I had a beautiful truck. I sold that, bought a bought a work truck instead because I can get the beautiful truck with the tools. So if you had to tell the people, man, like what was the main thing that you learned when you went to prison that you then turned around and, and you know, turned that negative into a positive? If you could pick one thing, what would it be? Really through all the things that I study uh, to understand what love is, man. To understand that love is just an action. It's a virtue. And through that is the only way for us to heal everybody. That's really, for me, what I took from all that. And through that mindset, it just has evolved my whole entire life on a whole nother level of existence. So that was my biggest thing is, is ex the first thing, accepting that you're, the police in there aren't the ones who arrested you. And the guys on the street arresting you, they just have a job. So... If they catch you doing something wrong, that's really your fault for being stupid enough to get caught. When you accept that and you just say, all right, well, I'm here. I can't leave earlier. I can't leave late. This is what it is. You just have to, to buckle down and start working on yourself. Yeah, man. Well, I give you props, bro, because, uh, you know, like I know, a lot of people aren't getting out. And 10 months later, you know, living in a neighborhood like that, making money. So. No. So big props to you for doing that. Um, if you could ha say one thing to a kid like struggling or a guy just getting out of prison, you know, that first month, two months struggling, what would you tell them? 
Take it slow. Just remember where you were and remember where you do not want to be. So just take it slow, man. There's a lot of stimulation out here and it's stuff that we've been suppressed from, but that's okay. Just take it slow and everything that you want, if you work for it, it'll come. And that's all. Yeah, bro. Facts. And keep watching DOC TV and I'll keep dropping shit. And I'll remind you that you don't want to go back to prison, but I appreciate Amen you. That. Um, yeah. I appreciate you for coming on, man, sharing your story. And like I said before, bro, big props for Thank turning you. your life around, man. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. All if right. you guys haven't, uh, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Give this video a thumbs up and turn your post notifications on all. So every time I do drop episodes, you can hear it first. And with that, it's DOC TV and we're out.